Hey, hello, it's Ryan here, and today I'm coming at you with a making magic tutorial. It's not about what to do, it's about how to do it. And in particular, we're talking about making jumbo cards. This is a custom set of jumbo cards that I've been making uh, for the last couple days, a bit at a time. Doesn't take that long. But <laughs> and these ones in particular are birds. They're for a friend of mine who's working on a a, a bird themed routine and wanted a quick way to pick a bird, any bird. So I'm making up this deck of cards. And before I finish up the project, I wanted to take a moment to film this video to show you exactly what I'm doing to make these cards. And I'll tell you, what, I'm pretty happy with them. They're really nice and sturdy. They're plastic laminate uh, coated, so they should last a long while. And they are made from five layers of material which is the process that I'm about to show you. That is today on tips and tricks for magicians, and let's get to it. First, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the process, the, exactly what are those five layers and what tools you're going to need to put this whole thing together. So first, let's talk about the layers. Obviously, you need to print out your cards, and these are five by seven cards. That, that's a different bird. Don't get confused. <laughs> um, these are five by seven cards, which happens to fit two on a normal uh, letter or A4 size piece of paper. And uh, you can see there are little marks, the little X's or crosses. Those are what they call crop marks, which is where these will eventually be cut. But we'll get to that later on. But so this is this is the face of the cards printed with the crop marks. And then you have a second page, which is the backs of the cards. You'll notice there are no crop marks on this, which again, we'll get to uh, in the details. So two printed pages. You also have an internal core layer, which is one of these two. This is two options. And then the option is how thick that core is. So I have a thick core and a thin core. And it depends. Like this card is made from the um, the thicker core. And this one's made from the thinner. And you can just, it's a matter of flexibility. I don't know if that shows on video. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not that huge of a difference. But it is something tangible that you, you, you can feel the difference in the core. And it's just a matter of how thick that inner layer is. So try different options as you make these. So that's layers. That's the middle layer. We've got a layer on top, a layer underneath. That's three layers. We need two more layers, which is the lamination on the outside. And this is just a, a rolled up piece of clear plastic lamination. So one layer is going to go on top and the final layer is on bottom for five, count them, five layers of material in this card. Now, as for tools to put this whole thing together, let's take a look at what I've got for you. First of all, all those layers that, that, that we have. And then we're talking about what we need to put them together. Uh, you'll need a bit of masking tape. This is just a this is not part of the card. It's just to help in making. You'll need a couple of thumbtacks or pins, which again, not required for the card, but helpful in making. <laughs> Next thing, you'll need something to cut them out. Now, I like to use this uh, paper trimmer. It's it's got a sliding blade that goes and cuts in a perfectly straight line. That's really helpful. If not, you can use scissors or a craft knife and a straight edge will also do the job. But I, I use a paper trimmer that I have. And the final thing to do is to round the corners, which I have this corner uh, rounding machine. The other option is you can get something that is round and simply use a blade or a pencil and scissors to trace around the edge if you don't have the fancy corner cutting machine. That is all the pieces you need. <laughs> now let's get to the making of, and I will, I'm just gonna do it for you. I, you're gonna watch me make the next card required for this set, and I'll walk through every step, and I will explain it as I go. So I have already started in that I have printed off 
the uh, the prints that I need. So we'll start with that. Now we have the outer two layers, printed layers, we've got our laminate layers, and we've got our core layers. And just a word on the core layers. So this this one, the thinner one, is uh, what is known as 110 pound cover stock. And that's something you can find in um, most office supply or craft supply stores. You get a whole ream of it, 500 sheets of this 110 pound cover stock. That's the pretty much the heaviest stock you can get at the office supply store. But it's not that thick. <laughs> and for, ha for a lot of these cards, I wanted a thicker middle than this. So I ended up with this paper. Again, it's hard to tell the difference on video. There's really no way to show you. There's that or that. You can hear the difference. <laughs> so this is a thicker paper, but you can't just buy this in the sheets. This is actually a full poster board that I cut down to size. Now the good news is, for this project, the size is not critical, like you just kind of roughly cut it down to size because you're going to do careful cutting later on. But This is approximately 8.5 by 11 sheets of this big poster board. So that's how I get the nice thick cover stock. I just, I can't find a place to buy it in small sheets because it's too thick for any printer to use pretty much so they don't really make it in small sheets <laughs> but for this particular card it's actually the thinner card because I don't know I don't want to get into the, the you know the secrets on this but this is going to be a forcing pack so it's actually a combination of thick cards and thin cards that's all I'm going to say about that but for this one, it's a thinner card, so I'm using the thinner stock. Let's get into the making process. I'm going to take one layer of my printed cards. Now in the book Making Magic, Martin Lewis talks about this five layer technique that he uses as well. And he uses a spray adhesive to attach. You'd spray the back of this or spray the core and then stick that on. And I just, I don't like dealing with spray adhesives. I find they, they're messy. Uh, you need to go somewhere to go and spray. And they get all over your fingers, all over everything. And worst of all is that they'll often soak through, I find, you know, they'll have little spots sometimes that soak through the page, depending on what you're using. So I, I started making these using self-adhesive label sheets. So you can see I'm peeling back this backing layer. This entire page is one label. There's no, there's no cutouts. It's a one page label. So I'm peeling back this edge and just that much. I peel it back and I give it a fold. And what that lets me do is instead of having an entire sticky sheet, which is dangerous because the second it touches anything, it's going to stick. This allows me to line it up without sticking it down. So you can see it's being held up by this folded part, the sticky bit isn't touching. So I can line it up, make sure it's going to land on my page appropriately, and only then can I push down this sticky side across there. So now it's stuck on this edge. I can reach underneath and I grab onto this little tab and I just start pulling it away. And as I do that, I'm making sure it smoothly adheres to my middle layer not leaving any bubbles. When I get to the halfway point it usually flips over on me but I just keep on gently pulling and making sure keeping air bubbles out of the process right to the very end. And now we've applied one printed layer to the core sheet. So that's stuck on there. So we're going to flip it over. Now notice you want to keep make sure you keep things aligned. I've got top written on there, and I've got top written on here. So make sure if you flip it this way, you're going to stick the wrong way. Um, just, you know, not all of your backs are going to be one-way designs, but this one is. Because the face is a one-way face, so I wanted to make sure I knew which way I was holding up the card 
So it's a one way back, so I know that I'm holding the card the right way. But the point is, you have your top corner marked so that if you flip this over that way, you know that your top is going to stay aligned with the top. Okay? So you do the same process. You take that label piece and you peel it back just a smidge, give it a little crease. That lets you line up your page. Now, here's the thing. This is this is where the thumbtacks come in handy. Because right now, I'm going to align that, but I don't know if I'm putting it this way or that way to keep it straight with the side that's already stuck. I can't see through the page I, to, to line it up properly. And I want to get this as accurate as possible. So here's the little secret. Your thumbtacks, and on every single page I have these little dots and these would be registration marks I guess you could call them and if those dots are lined up on both sides I know that my print is going to be perfectly aligned so here's what I do on the page that's already stuck to the core I'm going to take my little thumbtacks and poke them through as precisely as possible into the middle of my registration mark Okay, that's one, and the second one, trying to be as precise as possible to poke that through. Now, push it all the way through, and look at that. Now I have these handy land little pins that are poking out through the other side. And, right, this is my top, this is my top. It's all good. If I poke those pins through these spots, and this is the, it's, you, you just kind of have to poke. I missed it by a little bit. I'm going to try again. There we go. Right in the middle of that mark. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. The second one gets a little bit easier. Right in the middle of that mark. So now when I stick down this edge, I know that those dots on this side are exactly lined up with the dots on the other side. So those little pins make sure it's all good. Now I do the same thing, pulling that tab to apply this label to the page. And I know I've done a fairly good job. Oh, I got a bit of a bubble here. That's okay. Look, I can take this bubble and I can just work it towards the edge till it disappears. But here's the cool thing about those registration points. Look, we can test it. If we take this pin and poke it in the other end, poking straight through there, and we can see how we did. So without, those ones are really lined up, and these, oh, look at that. This is this was a really good one. There we go. That pin went right through. It's not always that perfect. That one really nailed it, or pinned it. <laughs> but uh, there you go. So that's the trick to getting things lined up, is those little registration pins. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, that's a little detail that may, you may or may not even care about it. You know, it's just a matter of how even your borders are. And if you know decks of cards, you know that even the, uh, you know, the professionals don't always get that right. <laughs> but to me, it's just, it takes a minute and it helps me make a nice finished product rather than having a back that's askew one way or the other. So I, I find that's worth the, the little bit of effort it takes. So now we've got our three layer card, printed face, printed back, core layer in the middle. And you can see that the pages aren't lined up. Like that's the reason for the registration marks. There is no printer in the world, not a single printer I've ever encountered in the world can do an aligned print onto a page. So you can't trust the edge of the page to think that it's lined up properly. <laughs> you have to use the print itself as the registration because you can see how, you know, that's three that's three corners if if that print was the same on both sides we wouldn't see three corners <laughs> so there you go don't trust your printer is what i'm saying
The final layers is the lamination. Now, again, you can get sheets of lamination, but this is not a sheet. This comes from this comes from uh, a roll. From this is dollar store stuff. It, this is actually meant they call it protector because it protects books is what they say it does. But in this case, I've taken that roll and just like the poster board, cut it down to approximate page sized sheets. You can get laminate in sheets. I just, it's harder to find than it, than it is to find the rolls. So I grab the rolls, cut them down to size. I'm going to apply this very similar to the way I do the labels. Where I peel back just a little bit on, actually, oh, you know what? No, I've got an even better way to do this. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I've learned. I've learned from experience. If you apply lam or lamination that way, um, you're, you're always in danger of bubbles. And I figured out a way, you know, in the last month or two, I figured out a way to apply lamination with zero risk of, well, not zero risk, very little risk of bubbles. And it's just, I like the registration marks, a little bit more care, but you get guaranteed results. Almost guaranteed results. <laughs> Asterix. <laughs> so let's take a closer look at this. Here's what I do. I actually take the entire backing off the lamination. And lay it on my table so it's sticky side up right now. And this is where my masking tape comes in. I'm actually going to tape my lamination down onto my working surface. So that's one edge that gets taped. And the other edge is going to get taped down. And as I do this, my goal is to give it just a little bit of a stretch so that it pulls out any wrinkles or pulls out any bubbles. You can't pull it too tight. Because then you're going to have um, the opposite problem, that it's going to kind of unstretch when it's applied. So that's stuck on the table. Now I can take my printed layer set here, and I'm going to roll it onto the label that's stuck on the table. So making sure that it's more or less aligned. Again, it's you don't have to worry about the edges of this, because we're going to trim the whole thing down. So. More or less is all I need, and I'm going to start on this edge. And I'm purposely lifting up my page because I want to roll it across the laminate. There we go. Now I take my tape and just pull it out to the side. And the same thing over here. And we've got lamination. Now this is not going to be perfect necessarily. It's not going to be 100%. So you get some sort of cloth, something soft, smooth, and you want to burnish this from the center out towards the edges. So I'm moving from the center out towards the edge because there's going to be little tiny bubbles or pockets of air that get trapped in there. And this works the air out to the edge. And it also does a good job of adhering onto the page. There we go. So now we've got a nice laminate with no, no bubbles and no wrinkles. And we need to do that whole process one more time for the final layer. One thing to watch out for with lamination is um, I don't necessarily recommend buying the laminating pouches for two reasons. One, 
a lot of times they'll only be adhesive on one side of the two sides, which means you have to have a card with a with a clear laminated border around the outside for it to work, right? Because one side just doesn't stick. So that's one common issue. The other issue with those pockets is that quite often it'll be even if, if, if they are adhesive on both sides, one side will be thick laminate and the other side will be thin. And I just like having even on both sides. So that's why I prefer this rather than using the double pocket laminating things. All right, so here I go, laying this down, sticking it there and letting it uh, roll across. And that gives us, as soon as I finish up the burnishing, that gives us one nicely laminated set. Well, I can hear there's a couple little bubbles in this one. The other thing to watch out for when you're laminating is the cleanliness of your workspace. If you, especially if you have pets or something with a lot of hair and fluff around, you will find that the hair and fluff will get sealed into your cards. <laughs> it's a definite hazard. So uh, consider that with your with your workspace that you, that you're working on. So we have it, and I'm just checking against the light here. Make sure that that's looking all smooth and all good. We have a five layer card. That's the process of making that card. And the final part of this is going to be trimming these two cards down to the finished product. So there we go. There's there's not there's no real tricks to this part. It's just a matter of making nice clean lines as you trim. As I said, you could use the uh, the straight edge and a and a blade, but I have a little paper trimmer which I'm going to use to do the job. So there's different kinds of trimmers, you know, you have the, the guillotine style or the rotary style, it doesn't much matter, especially if you're only doing the one page, one, one item. Um, I just like this style, particularly because it has this little wire running down the middle, which lets you really precisely line things up. And what we're using to line up is these crop marks, the little cross. So we're going to trim on that line of the cross. So when I line up my cuts, I'm lining it up to that cross, and I line up that side, and then I line up this side. And when that is all set, there we go. I get a nice clean cut right along the line. So I can twist it and do the same thing. up the far edge and then lining up the close edge and you'll get to know your cutter whatever whatever trimmer you use you know they have their little idiosyncrasies about um, how they cut you know whether you want to be on the inside of the line or the outside of the line and that's just the sort of stuff you figure out as you go now the good news is these crop marks are in the corners and that's on purpose because even if you cut so that you know you're outside of the line and like for example here this one it's just slightly outside of the line which means there is a tiny black line but when you round the corner any leftover from that mark is going to be removed entirely so keep those crop marks small enough that they're smaller than the rounding of your corner and you're guaranteed not to have any issues with that. And the final cut, you'll notice as you go you cut away crop marks but there's still the two crop marks that are left right for the middle.
And there we go. There's two five by seven cards. And the back is nice and aligned. <laughs> the final step. One more step to go. Oh my goodness. It's time. Da 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 to round the corners. I guess we're rounding the end. Um, and this, just so you know, this is a particular model. This is the, uh, um, what do they call this? The Kat, Katamaru Pro Cutter. Now this is actually a bit of a, like a um, secret that gets passed around magicians. Because this, it's, it's a really good corner cutter, but it actually has a little bonus use when it comes to playing cards. There's three different sizes depending on which side of the device you insert the paper. And the small size over here, the small size is pretty much exactly the size of a standard playing card corner. So if you want to cut something to match a playing card, you use the small size. But if you use the uh, medium size here on the end, and use it in a playing for a playing card what you get is a corner shorted card which is not obvious it looks very good but it allows you to go and riffle up to that um, particular card so this Katamaru Pro is, there's a reason that magicians get this one <laughs> but today we're going to use the large size for the large cards so let's do that so we pop it in and you only do one at a time, otherwise it's going to be pretty thick and pretty hard to push. But that's it. You just go around the edge, one corner at a time, and you get yourself a finished card. So there you go. You've got yourself a five-layer laminated jumbo custom card which fits perfectly with the rest of your cards because they've all been cut precisely and rounded just right. And you, you're, you're set for whatever card trick you want to create. This unlocks your imagination. This is the tools you need to make the magic you want to make. You don't have to have props like everybody else. Once you learn how to make props, you can have whatever you want. <laughs> so I hope that's been helpful. I hope you, uh, you've learned the process to make a five-layer card. And that's it. That, that's that's the whole meal deal. So get out there, print some cards, and make some magic. That's the point. <laughs> I'll see you next time on Tips and Tricks for Magicians. Signing off.